we're not long away from that World Championships now. No. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. Yeah, this year has been a long process, um, a lot of patience and a lot of base work, I guess, to try and like prolong everything so that we're ready for the end of September, beginning of October. But I race on Friday and it's now here and I'm so excited. I guess it's in weeks like that you feel the work you've done and you kind of feel the platform you've got. Is that, is that how you've sort of yeah, a hundred percent. So um, I've actually been away since the end of August. I was in Potchef's room in South Africa preparing with the endurance group. And that was a really lovely camp, like just quite small, everyone working really hard. And I got like the bulk of my steeplechase preparation done there. And then to come into Dubai and be reunited with like the rest of the team, it's just, it feels really good and it feels like it's real now. And that's really helped sort of layer up the final preparation for me. And yeah, do some speedier sessions with my training partner before going in. So it's been good. Sort of putting yourself through it, I guess that's yeah. kind of what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's quite grueling, like, um, but I love altitude training. It, it's something that I've worked out is fantastic for me. It works um, as part of my program, and yeah, I mean, you can't avoid the heat of what we're going to be going into in Doha. So I think it's better to be prepared and put yourself through that discomfort now rather than have a shock of it when you get there. So. I remember you saying just after trials, the previous year it was just you out on your own. Yeah. Obviously, you had sort of the three of you. Yeah. So, is that experience, was that quite helpful for you? sort of get a bit more out of yourself or particularly quite close to this championship mm, well. definitely um so i think it was brilliant that our trials were a bit later um it really helped for sort of allowing the momentum to build through the season rather than having to peak and then come back down and go again um and having the steeple chase growing in depth is just fantastic because it just pushes you that much more and that much more and you, you're actually having to think about okay well how am i going to beat these girls rather than okay, what am I going to get out of this as a training effect, um, which is it's a lot more exciting. I love racing and it's just brilliant to see um, Amy and Lizzie coming through so strong and I hope they can keep building on it. Yeah, this champs will be fantastic for them. So. Yeah, you mentioned that race felt a lot more like a championship race. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> That's clearly something you enjoy. Where does that come from, that sort of enjoyment? I'm so competitive. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I always want to win. I, in every, pretty much every element in my life, like I've just always been really competitive as I've been growing up in everything. And athletics is just the thing that I find really channels that inner drive the most. So yeah, like I, I can always find like that extra 5%, I suppose, if I know that it's to try and like win or to come out on top. So to have the girls pushing at a national level is fantastic. Yeah. Maybe how things have changed as well for you in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, massively. So London was my, I did Europeans the, first, the year before, but that was the first year I was steeplechasing. And so I kind of count London as my first major champs in the event. Very steep learning curve. Um, a far from ideal build up. I'd had injury and all sorts of things to deal with. Um, and I fell twice in my heat at London, which was at the time really, really brutal. Um, I think I was in shock when I came through the mix zone, so I didn't really have it processed at that point. Um, but I was, I was pretty upset afterwards. Um, but I went away and I learned so much from that. And I came back so much more determined and stronger. And yeah, I guess I just, I learned more about myself on like a mental level than I had done from anything else because I was, I was incredibly disappointed um, with how I'd performed. I felt like I'd let other people down. Um, whereas coming into this championships, I feel very strong and confident and like myself and my team have covered everything that we could have done. <laughs> um, and I haven't, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been in a good place for a really long time. We've just been training and working hard and enjoying it. So it's a, it's a very different outlook from how it was in 2017. With what happened in London, I guess coming so early in terms mm -hmm. of yeah. Has that given you real resilience, I guess? Because you can, you can look back on something as a, a tough experience, but one that's given you, you know, plenty in terms of the future. For sure. Like, so I guess in, a, in the best way I can put it is it taught me that the worst thing that can happen is that you fall over. Um, and that, that's, you, you get up and you carry on running. Like that, that's the worst case scenario. And like, other than that, you can only be your worst enemy. So if I go into things with a positive outlook, and I'm not going into anything thinking I'm going to fall over, like I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm strong. So that's, you're only your worst enemy. And if you put yourself out there and you seize the opportunity, which is something that Richard Kilty was talking about a lot in our team speech earlier today, um, that's it. You've just got to go out there and do your best and enjoy it. <laughs> and it makes such a big difference. I think I was very nervous in 2017, whereas now I just feel ready. Fantastic. Mm. Um, how do you gauge a successful world championship? Uh, successful world champs will be me stepping off knowing just feeling content with how I raced 
ideally that will be in the final. <laughs> um, but yeah, the heats will be a very tricky like stepping stone to negotiate and I know I'm going to have to run to my absolute maximum capacity. Um, but that's okay, that's fine. It's just a challenge um, and it's part of the journey of what we're on at the moment. And yeah, so a successful World Champs will literally just be me finishing and thinking, yeah, that was, that was good. <laughs> You did it in Berlin, but to wear that GB vest again, what mm -hmm. does that mean to you? So much. Yeah, there's nothing, you can't, there's nothing that beats representing your country. It's what gets you out of bed most days to go and train when it's like horrible outside. And it's, it's a really special feeling. It's impossible to really put into words. You kind of feel like when you're running with the vest on, it's the country's behind you rather than like you're going out there and occasionally just you're running around and you're representing yourself and your sponsors and things, but like when your country's there behind you, it's, it's a whole different ballgame.